in Unreal Engine 4.27, Epic have released the Lens Calibration and Distortion workflow as standard. This is how to use that with the Vanishing Point systems. Launch Unreal Engine 47. Launch Viper, load your pre-mapped lens curves. To calculate nodal offset as well, you want to launch Vector as well in the background. Jump into Live Link, connect to both Vector and Viper as shown. level we can start our calibration. Create a cine camera, zero it out like so, and then add a live link controller component. Select the live link controller component and set the subject that it uses to Viper. This is going to allow the lens data to be put onto that camera. If you scroll down to the new camera calibration panel, Click on Lens File and create a new lens file. This is going to be per lens, so it makes sense to name it after the lens that you're using. You double click that file to open it. You'll see the new camera calibration panel, and you'll see that some transient assets have been created in the level. The media plate here needs to be linked to the camera input won't be by default, so we need to drag our media bundle into our level. Go to Vanishing Point Image Plane, grab your BP Deck Link media bundle, just drag that into the scene like so. If you don't see the camera view, you need to input your capture card settings in here as normal. Press close and request play to refresh it if you need to, and you can just drag it out of sight like so. Select the media plate transient asset, and link the texture, this one here, T underscore VP deck link BC, which is that's your live camera view. Once you've done that, you can jump back into the camera calibration tab here, and you should see your camera view. The transparency slider will adjust the transparency of the SDI plate, so you can see through it if you need to. For now, just leave that at zero. Make sure you're in the lens information tab here and give your lens a name, input whatever you like for the serial number, the lens model will be spherical, unless it's anamorphic, and you want to put your film back sensor size settings in, so we can copy those from Vector, or from your camera documentation if you're not using Vector. Make sure that you do this before you start the calibration, very important. Hit save lens information, and then jump to the Lens Distortion tab here, we can start calibration. Make sure that your camera is selected, and your Lens Distortion algorithm is set to checkerboard. Click on the checkerboard drop-down, you won't see anything, and then you need to make a new one with the little plus icon there. That's going to create a camera calibration checkerboard asset in your level. We need to adjust the rows and columns to match our vector checkerboard, or the one that you're using. By default, this is 7 and 5 and 4.5 if you're using the vector checkerboard. If you have your own checkerboard, you can count the corners yourself uh, and measure the square length yourself as well. Please note that this is the inner corners of the checkerboard rather than the square numbers. Make sure that you see your fizz data coming in. Make sure that your checkerboard is set as the algorithm. Set your transparency to zero. That's your live link data down here. What you want to do is set your focus to where your checkerboard is in the world, so start really close. And you just click on the checkerboard image to capture a frame. Move the checkerboard or the camera to get a new position. Click on the image again to capture another frame. So the idea here is that we calibrate at different focal distances for each lens. So we set the checkerboard close, we focus on that checkerboard, we capture some frames, um, generally 20 is quite a good number per step. Then we move the board further away, we adjust the focus, and we repeat the procedure until we've used the whole focus range of our lens.
Once you've captured the frames for that step, you can use the Add to Lens Calibration button. That's going to calculate your calibration error. What you're aiming for is less than 0 0.2 for the error value. Move the checkerboard further away from your camera. Focus on that checkerboard in that range and repeat the process, save more frames for the second step. You can move the board or the camera for this, just make sure you get a good range of positions and the board stays in the focal range uh, the entire time. Again, you want about 20 frames. Um, keep a good position and rotational range in these captures. Make sure that you have at least a few where you've rotated the board to an angle to the lens, as that helps with the focal length calculation. Try and avoid any strong specular highlights like that one. Uh, if you do see that, change the lighting and block it out so that your board stays nice and flatly lit. This is going to help with the calibration as well. Once you have your frames for this step, again hit the Add to Calibration button, make sure you're around 0 0.2 or less, move the board further away, refocus on the board, and repeat again. Same thing again, once that's done, add to calibration, check your errors nice and low, move the board further away one more time, refocus on the board, and repeat.
when you get to the end of your focal range, hit that button one more time to add the calibration data, and then you're done. If you adjust your lens, you'll see the distortion parameters change live. As we change the focus, and then we have our calibration data. If you're not using vector and you want to assign your lens calibration data to a regular cine camera, just create a cine camera in your scene, like so. Create a live link component. Connect a Viper via live link and assign Viper as the source. Scroll down to the calibration settings and load the file that we just created. See it update. This is the nodal offset here, which we haven't done yet. We're just doing lens distortion. We want to add a lens distortion controller as well. Make sure your camera is selected and select the distortion file and turn distortion on. And that's it. Have your distortion file will update along with your Viper Live Link data and will be applied correctly to your cine camera in the scene. To calculate the nodal offset using vector and the new calibration system, simply look down at the floor plane. Hide the camera calibration checkerboard because we won't be using that. And in our vanishing point assets floor folder, you want to drag the BP floor blueprint into your scene. Because we're connected to vector via live link, the data will come through as shown. We zero out this blueprint and we'll assign the correct data to the blueprint. Set origin from anchor to make sure we're zeroed. And then we see our floor mesh being transformed by our vector data in relation to our cine camera there. If you adjust the transparency here, we'll see that there's an offset. And that's expected because we're about to fix it. Select the nodal offset points method and select your blueprint floor as shown. What you'll see in this drop down is there's a few different points in the floor blueprint. If we go to the viewport, you see those same points in here. Make note of where they are and which one's which. So we have origin at the corner there, lower right, upper right, top right, top left, and center. What we're going to do is click on those points in our image. So we have center here. I'm going to click on the corresponding point. Changes to top left, we click on that corresponding point, to top right, to lower right, to upper right, and then to origin. Hit the add to nodal offset calibration button and it will calculate your nodal offset down here. When you adjust the transparency, you should see a perfect lineup between the geometry markers and the markers of the sheet. Repeat this process across different focus distances to add it to the calibration matrix. Add this distortion and nodal offset values using vector. Just create your vector setup as you normally would with spawn data and connect. Set your sync and your timing offset. Compile your camera. Set a key so you can see what you're doing. With your vanishing point data actor selected, go to add component and add a live link controller. In your live link panel, make sure you're connected to Viper. You want to select Viper as your source. Down on the calibration tab, select your calibration file. The add nodal offset will toggle the nodal offset on and off, like so. And it's going to put that data on the tracked camera component. Now the vector offset is currently being put on the offset node there, so we have two separate offsets, which we don't want. Go to the use vector offset tab, turn that one off if you're using the Unreal one. Then we'll have the offset on the camera, but not on the offset node. To use the distortion, add component again and make a lens distortion component. Select your tracked camera and then select your distortion file and hit apply distortion. That's going to apply a lens distortion and your nodal offset to your vector composite. We can test this by getting our floor mesh, zeroing it out and setting it as a foreground object. And it should be nicely aligned 
with your markers like so. You can test this by moving your camera. And you should see very minimal sliding as you rotate and pan the camera around.